Hi, this is Dr. Mark Haverkorn of River City Oral Surgery in San Antonio, Texas. I want to talk a little bit about anesthesia, dental anesthesia, and just regular old anesthesia. We get tons of questions about this. If you look at our website, almost everything that we do includes IV sedation. And so patients ask me, am I going to be totally out? Uh, I want to be totally out. I don't want to know anything. Why do I have to go out? I've never gone out before. Uh, I'm scared to go out. So there's different types of anesthesia for all surgery. Local anesthesia means that you're getting injections of drugs like lidocaine. Um, sometimes people will still use the term Novocaine. That drug is, I think, still available, but it's outdated. I don't think anybody really uses it. And then there's longer-acting drugs uh, like Marcaine. Uh, brand name is Bupivacaine. So those are just the injections that a doctor puts in you somewhere so that they can work on you without you feeling pain. So that's what your dentist injects in your mouth. If you go to the ER with a cut on your finger, that's what they inject in your finger so that they can sew it up. Okay, that's local anesthesia. Another type of anesthesia is just laughing gas. Nitrous oxide is what it's called. Um, that's the little mass that the dentist put over your nose and you breathe in. And it just, it makes you feel a little goofy. Um, the more you turn it up, the, the stronger an effect it has. Um, if you turn up laughing gas to 100% laughing gas and the patient is breathing zero oxygen, which of course is fatal, but if you turn it up that high, and assuming they weren't going to die from the lack of oxygen, only about 40% of patients would be unconscious. So what that tells you is that laughing gas is just not that potent. In dentistry, we typically run it between like 30 and 60%. Um, and it, it can give you maybe a mild buzz or just a little bit of euphoria that helps you get through a dental procedure. Uh, there's nothing wrong with laughing gas. I don't use it because a lot of my patients are pretty scared and it's not going to knock them out the way that they were hoping to be knocked out. So you, you spend some money for something that just isn't that great, in my opinion. Uh, then the next highest level of anesthesia would be some sort of, of sedation. Um, one way of doing that is with pills. So sometimes uh, dentists or doctors will just prescribe you a little happy pill, Valium, or something like that. That gives you a little buzz. Maybe you feel like you had a drink or two, and so you're a little bit relaxed, and maybe your memory's a little foggy. And, you know, of course, like any drug, you can take enough of those pills to just knock you flat out or even kill you. But that's not the dose that we're using. So... Pill anesthesia, pill sedation is typically not all that strong. Uh, the next step up is IV sedation. So this is uh, the same kind of stuff that's used for colonoscopies or commonly in my world for wisdom teeth. Uh, it's also used uh, to put stents in the heart and there's varying degrees of sedation. So you start the IV and you give patients drugs and, and the way I explain it, and maybe this is a little bit crass, but I say, look, you can, you can have like a two beer buzz or you can have like a 12 pack drunk um, or you can, you know, drink the full, I don't know, what is it, a case and be passed out. IV sedation works like alcohol. It affects your brain similarly. So a little bit of IV drugs gives you a nice little buzz, but you still know what's going on. You're still going to remember everything. You're still going to hear your doctors talking. And a lot of IV sedation knocks you flat out. And if you get enough of it, you're technically under what's called general anesthesia. You're not breathing any gases like you would in the operating room, but you've had enough IV drugs to be flat knocked out. When a patient asks me, am I going to be knocked out? I always say it just depends on what you mean. Um, if you mean totally unaware and not going to remember a thing, not going to feel a thing, then I can say confidently that pretty much all of my patients are that way. I use enough drugs to get that. Um, if you mean general anesthesia, you've got no reflexes. I can touch your eye. You don't blink. I can gag you. You don't gag. Um, you know, you don't respond to pain at all if I pinch you. You know, I do get some patients that deep. They're still breathing, but they're that deep. But a lot of my patients are not quite that deep. So whether you're under deep sedation, which is kind of what I prefer for most people, or general anesthesia, you're not going to remember anything. A lot of dentists and, and other types of doctors will use moderate sedation, which is more, you know, that's, that's, I don't know, four or five beers into a night, and you're feeling pretty good, and maybe you don't remember everything, but you do remember a lot of it, and maybe you even still talk to the doctor a little bit, but at the end, you're like, yeah, that wasn't so bad. 
that's a very common form or, or level of anesthesia. I like to go deeper than that, but that's what uh, a moderate IV sedation would be. And then the highest level of anesthesia is a true general anesthesia. Like I said, you can reach that with IV medication, but the most common way that general anesthesia is given to patients is we start an IV, we hammer them with some drugs and knock them out so that they're not going to respond and not going to gag. Then we put that breathing tube down in their throat and we keep them asleep with gases that they're breathing. Those gases wear off faster than a lot of the IV drugs um, and are just easier to keep people asleep that way than constantly pumping drugs into their veins. Um, so I offer that, or, or River City Oral Surgery offers that in um, our practice. When we're uh, replacing all the teeth with dental implants, that's what we use. We have a medical anesthesiologist that comes in, brings his own equipment, um, starts an IV, gives the patients enough drugs to just knock them flat out, puts a breathing tube in, and keeps them asleep with gases that they breathe, and then they wake up quickly when we're done. Um, that is the that inhalational intubated anesthesia is the same anesthesia that they would use for brain surgery, belly surgery, heart surgery, a bypass, a heart transplant. So when our patients are having all their teeth removed and implants placed, they are out. They don't remember anything, and it's a great experience, and it really doesn't cost that much more. In fact, it's just built into the pricing for our um, implant surgeries, but we actually offer that deep of an anesthesia um, if patients want it for any surgery. Our anesthesiologist is willing to provide it to anybody who's you know healthy enough to, to have it um, at, at an additional cost. So I, I hope that just clears it up a little bit. You can have local anesthesia where you're wide awake and you're just numb. You can have some nitrous oxide laughing gas, which we call not sedation, but anxiolysis, like we're just helping your anxiety a little bit. And then you can have sedation, and that can come as a relatively light or maybe a moderate sedation with pills. And then it can go anywhere from light to general anesthesia with an IV. And then the highest level uh, would be a um, true intubated, what we call general endotracheal tube anesthesia. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to follow up. Thanks.